Hi there guys, Mark here from Cream Sauce, and today we're having a look at the new firmware version 2.0 for the Vortex series. Today I'm joined with Dan Walters, a board operator from London. Dan, how are you? Hi, thanks for having me. Very well, thank you. No worries. It's good. We thought we'd have a little Zoom chat to talk about some of the new features for this firmware version. Uh, there's also some improvements and some fixes as well. So Dan, I'll start with uh, some of the, the new features. You've actually had a chance to play with this firmware version um, yep. ahead of its release. And uh, we've now got RDM, uh, RDM over DMX and CRMX, finally. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Um... When building large arrays of Vortex, you're always going to get the address out by one, or you're going to get the, you know, maybe the wrong DMX mode. And now we can build them and we, we can fix problems retrospectively. Uh, we could also rig them without power now. So they can be we, they can be put in an installation and then after the generator's turned up, we can uh, we can set the addresses in mode. We also now have custom white points. So that's cross-mating between HSI mode and also RGBW mode. What can you tell us, Dan? Um, so when using a, an external media server, we can now pick what our white is. So that gives a cinematographer control that when red, green, and blue, and the content is at full, what our target is. Um, and the Vortex is now tracking that. Uh, so it's step three, and uh, it, gives, it gives all control back to the uh, cinematographer and the gaffer. Uh, we now also have DMX presets. Uh, the ICLS uh, members will know this is the Barnes button that's been requested. Uh, Dan, what can you tell us about this? Uh, this is quite exciting. It's the only fixture I know that has this built in now, where we can set a like a studio mode or a sort of a location mode uh, within a fixture, and at the press of a button, jump between our favourite SACN universe DMX address or DMX mode, and then go out to a location and maybe choose a, a snap to a mode with a, a lower DMX footprint. And when you've got a, a kit that's going between two different sets or locations all of the time, it really gives you that confidence in being able to jump between the two. Okay, we can also now save and store to USB. Dan, can you tell us in which instance this would be handy? Uh, yeah, so, being able to save and restore all of the settings within a Vortex allows you to choose your dimmer mode, your uh, dimmer curve, uh, your user presets, which have been around a little while, and take them from one Vortex and apply them to all of the different Vortex in your range, whether it be a Vortex 4 or a Vortex 8. And finally, we've added HTTP merging for streaming ACN. Yeah, so in a, in a large production environment, you, you might not just have the one console driving these Vortex. You might have a media server in the corner, you might have a lighting console, and it's really important that when you've got two sources, or up to four in the, in the case of the Vortex now, uh, you can merge on a higher stakes precedence on, a, on an address level. So you can have the RGBW data coming from the media server, but retain that custom white point and that dimmer control at the lighting console. Well, thanks for going through that with me, Dan. Uh, for more information, everybody, go to creamsource.com. We'll have the release notes for this where you can see all of the improvements, all of the fixes, and we'll see you next time.